The questions that we're asking are really exciting. They've never been asked for some of these species, but to be able to do it at this scale, with this data frequency, with this level of infrastructure, this quality of a partnership, both in the black duck and the mallard world, there aren't many examples of that. And so the whole bundle, novel science, high quality partnerships, incredible training environment, that's what I live for. I absolutely love this kind of stuff. I think that what, what's special to me about the eastern U.S. is the diversity of habitats. You know, starting with the Atlantic coast and we have, we have salt marshes, uh, tidal bays and creeks and rivers and inlets. And moving inland, we have a, just a diversity of freshwater uh, resources and habitats. And those habitats are, are super important for a number of different waterfowl species and a, a couple of really iconic ones on the eastern coast, you know, including American black duck, of course, eastern mallards and then Atlantic brant. For mallards and black ducks in particular, because they're two species that actually compete for habitat, having these large studies going on at the same time, we're gonna get a lot of information on how each species utilizes the landscape for waterfowl management. That's why you see 22 different partners joining together um, to try to address this concern, because whatever we do in New York affects the birds that are gonna be in Maryland, that are gonna be in Virginia, all throughout the flyway. Breeding populations of mallards in the Atlantic Flyway have been declining about 1% per year over the last 20 years, and harvest rates for eastern mallards have declined about 26%. Black ducks have been declining steadily over the last few decades since the 1970s, and conserving these species requires habitat work in wetlands, and this work improves ecosystems in general and helps other species like amphibians and has a really wide range of impacts not only for mallards but other species as well. It's super important from the perspective of waterfowl and, and ducks unlimited's mission right in the Atlantic flyway and so working in those environments towards our mission but of greater importance is is really the benefit that we have to society as a whole. You know waterfowl need sustainable landscapes they need fresh water they need fresh air, they need food, so do human beings. And so the work that we're doing benefits waterfowl, it benefits water quality, um, and all those good things that, that we all need to sustain ourselves on this landscape. So this is a really exciting collection of folks interested in studying Eastern mallards and black ducks. We're on the wintering areas for these ducks. And so we're hoping to study the full annual cycle for these birds, both black ducks and mallards. And to do that, we attach these tracking devices, which record the location of individuals every hour, but they also record the behavior of these individuals every six to 10 minutes. And so here you understand whether the individuals are feeding, flying, sleeping at regular intervals for one to two years. And so we're putting hundreds of these devices on these ducks on wintering areas and then learning about where they migrate to in staging, where they breed, and how long they live, the survival. So we started to reconsider harvest regulations and had a lot of questions about, you know, what's driving this decline. There's a lot of different hypotheses. None of them are really well tested at this point to really understand. And so that's kind of how this project came together was just trying to understand more about what's causing this decline and hopefully figuring out ways that we can inform whether that's habitat management, harvest management, um, to try to um, slow that decline or, or reverse it. And so um, it's important for hunters and for the general public who just like seeing ducks. Yes, yeah, so by protecting black ducks, you protect saltwater marsh, but also as a migratory species, you protect habitats along the, along the migratory routes, spring and fall, and also up into the boreal, which is another sensitive habitat that uh, we need to be caring for. And then as you protect those habitats, you protect all the other species that, or benefit all those other species that are using those same habitats and increase biodiversity and make those ecosystems more resilient to change in the future. So these, species, these uh, projects are really getting at uh, a better understanding of a lot of life history traits, 
and a lot of uh, ecological aspects of eat, at both of these species. And so we're really uh, trying to get at a better understanding, particularly of eastern mallards, of why the northeast U.S. birds are so different in population trajectory from those eastern Canada birds. And in addition to that, yeah, better understanding of black duck breeding ecology and really hoping to improve habitat management for those species by identifying important habitats or important habitat traits and how we can better that landscape for them. Well, Ducks Unlimited has been a, a leader for decades in wetland and waterfowl conservation. So when you think about conservation of waterfowl in North America, you think about Ducks Unlimited. They have a variety of experts from the scientists, policy folks. Uh, really, they, they provide lots of services to the conservation community and they're active partners in research projects like this. So as John mentioned, we leverage funding among entities but also uh, we work together on, on critical thinking to develop the science to, to better our conservation planning. Yeah, so this project in specific is really exciting just because of the number of partners involved and the amount of information we're gonna get from these birds and are already getting from these birds. Um, just to have such a large sample size, it's really rare. Um, a lot of times when you look at um, Wildlife research, a lot of it is very site specific and you can apply that to a lot of areas, but but it's not often that you can do an entire like population level study where you can be marking birds from South Carolina all the way through the Maritimes of Canada. Um, I mean, just the scale of this study is what makes it unique and the sample sizes, uh, I mean, we're gonna have millions and millions of data points and it's gonna be really powerful in what we're able to um, learn about mallard populations and about how they move across the landscape, survival, breeding, all that stuff. I would just say, you know, this this project, it's it's really exciting to be part of it, but then also it's, an, it's exciting to be able to communicate what we're finding uh, to, to the general public, to hunters, to non-hunters, about the importance of wetland conservation and and really seeing this large-scale partnership across you know that extends from south carolina up into canada into the maritimes and seeing folks kind of all doing the same thing uh, working together it's it's really it's a great example of large-scale continental conservation we're really excited to be able to continue this work for the next few years and share our results with again of conservation partners from the southern east coast of the U.S. all the way up into the Maritimes of Canada.